During the first half of 1958, Convair Fort Worth conducted a series of studies at the Oak Ridge National Laboratories to gain additional radiation shielding information. This was the final phase of the airborne shielding program performed with the aircraft shield test reactor as a radiation source. The program began in September 1955 when Convair's nuclear test aircraft first carried the aircraft shield test reactor aloft. The nuclear test aircraft was a conventionally powered B-36 modified to carry a shielded crew compartment for the five-man crew, a half-scale crew compartment, and the aircraft shield test reactor and its nuclear instrumentation. The crew compartment utilized lead and rubber as shielding materials. The cylindrical half-scale crew compartment was carried to simplify dose rate analysis. Sleeves of different wall thickness were slipped into the half-scale crew compartment to obtain dose rates as a function of wall thickness. The radiation source, the ASTR, was a water-cooled, water-moderated reactor designed to operate horizontally. Shield tanks, which surrounded the reactor core, could be filled or drained in flight to change the source pattern. An external lead shield augmented the gamma shielding. The ASTR was rated at one megawatt maximum thermal power. Thus assembled, the NTA was used to study the effects of air, structure, and ground scattering of gamma and neutron radiation. A three-phase program was carried out to separate the individual scattering components and determine their contribution to the total dose rate. The first studies involved the ASTR and the half-scale crew compartment to learn the air and ground scattering effects. The second included the NTA to determine the air, ground, and structure effects. The flight program was intended to determine the air and structure effects. At first it was thought that by a simple process of subtraction, the three individual components of scattering could be separated into air, structure, and ground effects. But it was soon learned that the structure was changing the air and ground scattering to such an extent that it was impossible to separate the three effects directly. Additional information on air effects alone was necessary. Convair then planned to take the ASTR and the crew compartments to the tower shielding facility at Oak Ridge, Tennessee. With the ground and structure effects removed, the air scattering component could be determined. Auxiliary equipment to support the ASTR tower experiment was designed and fabricated. It consisted of a truss to carry the two crew compartments aloft, a reactor support system designed to rotate the ASTR through 360 degrees, and a heat exchanger for reactor cooling. As fabrication and testing of equipment neared completion, the crew compartment was removed from the NTA and made ready for the move to Oak Ridge. The ASTR normally was housed in a loading pit, from which it was remotely installed in the NTA. Following a final checkout of the modified control system, the 35,000-pound reactor was removed from the loading pit and readied for its cross-country trip. A truck convoy was assembled to carry all the equipment from Fort Worth to the Oak Ridge site. The convoy arrived at the tower shielding facility 44 hours after leaving Convair. Preparations for the first phase of the experiment began immediately. This phase, 
consisted of source term mapping near the ground to compare with results obtained at Fort Worth. Radiation detection instruments were placed in constant temperature control cans and mounted at various positions to determine the fast neutron and gamma dose rates and thermal neutron flux. Prior to reactor startup, the heat exchanger and moderator water systems were thoroughly checked. Shield tanks were filled to obtain the correct configuration. When the system reached the desired altitude of 186 feet, the mapping phase of the experiment was ready to begin. An intercom system warned personnel to leave the outside area and go to the shielded control room. Standard procedure at the tower shielding facility calls for close surveillance of local weather conditions with radar. When the radar observer was satisfied that the local weather was clear, the reactor engineer started up the reactor. Shim and dynamic rods were adjusted until desired power level was reached. The reactor was rotated to various positions to obtain a map of the radiation patterns for different reactor configurations. These values were used as source terms in the analysis of the experiment and for correlations with the data from the NTA program. Cables carried the radiation signals more than 575 feet to the recording instruments. These instruments, located in the control room, recorded the data from the fast neutron, gamma, and thermal neutron detectors. Personnel remained in the control room until the reactor was shut down and lowered to the ground. Phase two of the tower experiment involved the three major components of the NTA. The ASTR, the crew compartment, and the half-scale crew compartment in their same relative position as in the aircraft. Radiation detectors were located in the same positions as in the NTA program. The tower studies simulated the flight portion of the NTA program with only the airplane structure missing. Under these simulated conditions, it was possible to isolate the air scattered radiation component. Comparing information obtained at the tower with the ground and flight experiments, it was possible to determine the structure and ground effects and their interrelationships. The information obtained during the airborne shielding program has been useful in two important ways. It has been directly applied to shield design problems and has verified design methods. This program has contributed greatly toward developing efficient shield systems and constitutes a major step forward in development of nuclear-powered aircraft.